Do you want to paint and weather a nice desert tank? This video is for you. In this second and last part we will cover detail painting, pin washing, rust effects, dirt accumulation, dusting and some grease and oil spills. All the steps will be well explained and there will be some tips and tricks for you. Are you ready? Let's dig into it. What's up glue sniffers? We got to this point in the previous part, so the model is painted and the chipping is done. Be sure to check the first part of the video in order to understand the workflow. I did the chipping at this stage because the sponge application can be messy. Now let's proceed to detail painting. Most of the details will be painted in different shades of grey. So I prepared a one to one mix of grey and black for the rubber parts and added some black and white paint to the palette for making other shades for other elements. First I covered the rubber parts of the wheels. Two coats were needed for good coverage and the paint was great for brush painting straight from the bottle. Then I darkened the first mix a little and painted the guns. For the other metal elements the shade is not so important, just be sure to cover everything. At the end I made a lighter mix and thinned it with water. I made some light stains on all the metal elements. I skipped the guns and the rubber wheels. I took some metal steel acrylic color. First I painted the outer surface of the idler because it is in full contact with the tracks. I used the paint straight from the bottle but it's too thick. Just go easy with water because it's quickly too thin. I also picked up the teeth of the sprocket. Then I chipped the welds with this color too. You know, it is a well known fact that welds are made from high quality steel and they don't rust. It is also a nice little detail to add some life to the model. Until you don't exaggerate with dust, as you will see later in this video. I made some chipping to the rim of the rubber wheels. But don't exaggerate here because this rim is not in full contact with the tracks. The last step was to make some graphite dust from a pencil and polish the biggest bare metal parts. The result is good, but I think that it would be even better if the steel paint was not applied so thick. The detail painting is done. And I'm not happy with the wood painting, so I will not go into the details at this moment. We can look at the results before we move on to some selective pin washes. Before I move to enamel washes and effects, I covered the entire model with two coats of Tamiya clear varnish. It was tinted with Mr. Leveling Thinner in a one part paint, three part thinner ratio. This is a great step that will make the pin wash step a lot easier, but the glossy surface is not good for other effects. So, I will advise you to do it immediately after the airbrushing of the base color, you know, before the chipping and all the detail painting. Later you will see why. I opted for the Africa Corpse Wash and Amo Odorless Thinner. Be sure to mix the bottle well if you want good results. Open it, stir it with a toothpick, add a mixing bowl and shake the hell out of it. You can use the wash straight from the bottle but it's a little thick for my taste, so I thin it down slightly. So take the wash with a fine brush and touch the corner. It should flow around by itself. For those big lines the brush can be almost fully loaded, but be sure to unload it for those small details. Here you can see why. If you load or unload it properly there will be less cleaning later. When it's dry to the eye, you can leave it there for 10 to 15 minutes, no problem, you can start cleaning the part. Take a clean fine brush, put it in the thinner and unload it completely on a paper towel. If you made a nice clean application, you will only have to clean the entry points. Be sure to clean the brush often. 
You can see how the glossy surface is helping the wash to flow freely. For the welds, for example, I thinned down the wash even more. I was talking about selective pin washing because I only applied it around the details. That way, you have less to clean later and only the details will pop out. Same story with the black wash. I use this for the metal tools, for the scars on the rubber wheels and for the outer rim of the rubber wheels. I totally forgot to paint the spare track in the front and I did it only at this point. But this is good, because now I can show you why the details should be painted after the clear protective coat. Different shades of grey and some enamel rust effects and you will end up with a fantastic finish. Just apply some effects on and drag them around with enamel thinner. The exhaust was painted before the protective clear coat and you can see that working with rust effects is much more difficult because of the glassy surface. Now you know. It's time to mount some loose parts. I started with the return rollers and of course there was too much paint on them and they didn't fit the hole. And now the trust me I'm an engineer moment. I took a 2mm drill bit to enlarge the holes and the bit was so sharp that I drilled through the flank. That led to the second problem which was aligning the rollers. Luckily for me one roller on each side went in without drilling so I could align the others accordingly. I blocked them with extra thin CA. Ah, those joys of modeling. Then I moved to the stowage and I use medium CA for this. Be sure to check out the video about the stowage on my channel. It was built on the model so all the pieces fit perfectly. Just apply some CA and put them in place. I was thinking about using this nice DIY cargo net, but in the end I didn't, because the squares seemed too big. Maybe someday I will make a smaller one. I opted for this nice string instead. I painted it as you can see here. But the paint effect was too strong in the end. For sure, a white string would be a better choice. I was blocking the stowage with a rope using the features of the tank. Just think about how would you do it in real life. And of course, I broke some handles and some lifting hooks during the process. The string was acting as a wire because of the paint and mounting it wasn't a nice task at all. For the end knot there is a trick. Just make some tension and block it with extra thin CA. There is no way that you can make a knot while keeping this tiny rope in tension. And here we go. Now we will do some dirt and sand accumulations on the lower part of the tank. For this I used ammo acrylic sand. It is the same texture paste that I used for the desert scene where this tank will be and I'm pretty sure you will figure out why. I darkened it with some dunkel brown paint. I also added some water to make it thinner. That way it will be easier to control. I started on the lower part of the tank. The amount was something like this. It is not rocket science. Just apply some of it in the logical places. Use small brushes and try to somehow blend the transition. You can start with a small overall amount and then you keep adding the effect in some places. You should put it on the wheels too. Go lightly here, use a thinner mix and blend it even more with water. While I'm doing it, I will try to invite you to my Patreon team. Well, the thing is getting bigger and I have two new members to welcome, Mike Harbour and Oscar Scolling. 
I am posting daily step-by-step -step progress photos with detailed descriptions. Basically, you can build those dioramas with me and help me with questions and suggestions. And you will have a personal modeling tutor. We have a Facebook group and a Discord server for you to post your work. And we will be in daily contact. Also, my Patreons are getting early access at free videos and my personal reference photos. All this for just 4.5 euros or dollars per month. A big thank you to all of my Patreon team. You are amazing. It's time now to include those nice Freel model tracks in the process. I made a funny video about those too. Go and check it out if you want to have some good time. They are burnished with Amos fluid. For now, I only applied some very thin paste here and there. We will finish them later. The paste was still not dark enough for my taste, so I treated it with a heavy wash made from dunkel brown and black, just to get some contrast between the tank and the dirt. And now we are looking at the results. Here I exaggerated, but otherwise I am happy with the result. Let's start the dusting process. The idea was to cover the entire model with heavy chipping fluid, spray the dust over it and then control the effect by brushing the dust away. And it worked, but not exactly in the way I was hoping for. It was my first try with chipping fluid. Straight from the bottle, pressure around 2 bars and it's quite a strange liquid to airbrush. Don't worry if droplets start to form. They will level themselves when dry. If you want good results, two coats are needed. I waited around 10 minutes before starting the second coat. Now for the actual dust. I chose Tamiya Deck 10 and Mr. Leveling Thinner because I don't know how to control the ammo acrylics very well for now. My usual dust mixing ratio is one full small reservoir of thinner to one brush load of paint. I started with one brush load and the result was great, but for this approach with chipping fluid I needed a stronger mix, so I added another brush load of paint. And now for the scary part. I started with the wheels. I gently covered them with dust. I waited around 5 minutes and then started the removing step. I started with the soft brush. Not wet, just humid, and some overall tapping to activate the process. Then I took a smaller brush for the fine work. The point is to remove the dust from where you don't want it, in order to avoid an overall constant dust coverage. I encountered two main problems. I will show them here with the turret. Now we are applying the dust. And this is going well. Look at this red piece of cloth. It's all or nothing with the chipping fluid. Meaning that you can do a nice transition. Or there is dust, or there is not. No midway. But let's be honest. It's chipping fluid, so it should be that way. Now I really don't know what was I expecting. And the second problem? is that it's hard to see the differences between the dust color and the paint on the tank. So it is difficult to see what you are doing. Here on video you can see it well, but trust me, after a few hours with those magnifying lenses and strong lights you will not see a sh it's another story. If I will do this again in the future I will definitely go for a more selective precise application and not overall like I did here. On those return rollers you can see both problems again. All or nothing and how well can you see the dust on the darker rubber surface. On the upper hull you should apply the dust more lightly. One good thing about it is how the stowage now is blended in, because until now it was shooting out too much. But in the end, I think I managed to get a pretty cool dusty desert look. And more importantly, all the base color lights and shadows are still somehow visible. So I'm happy with this part. 
I mounted the turret and of course it was blocked and I was not even able to put it down because of the paint. Be sure to send those teeth to make them larger. I nearly had a heart attack. With brutal but controlled force I managed to turn it in place. Lesson learned. I sanded the paint of the axles for the wheels. And thanks God those were going smooth. For the final steps we need all the tank together. And now let's take a look at it without the tracks. Well, not bad at all I think. Let's finish the tracks. All we need is a heavy wash made from the same paint as for the dust step. So, Tamiya Daktan and Mr. Leveling Thinner. Just slap it here and there. Don't forget the inside part. When the wash was dry, just some sanding to put out the bare metal here and there. And this is it. We need some grease and oil leaks. I used Amo Engine Grime for this. Those effects are basically thicker enamel washes. It was the first time for me. I will advise you to thin them down. So, start with a thin mixture in places where those leaks should be. Look at some references and try to choose logical places. When the thin application is dry, you can go on with a thicker mixture. Clean away the excess, apply it again, thick, thin, here, there, up, down. As I said, I'm not giving you instruction because I'm still learning them. Next time, hopefully, I will be able to show you a proper approach. I locked the tracks and left those two pieces of wire longer in case there was some need to put them down. A drop of extra thin CA and we are ready to go. Well, 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 the struggle of building those tracks is repaid now, that's for sure. In place of the standard 360 degree turnaround video, I want to show you something else this time. For the first time I took some proper photos with my Nikon D5100 camera. Ok, proper is a big word. This is my first adventure in photo editing and I am quite happy. Let me know what you think. In the future, when I learn how to do this, those photos will be shared with my Patreons for downloading in high resolution. I am working on the figures right now, together with the Patreon team. And for now, they are coming out great. So, this will also be the theme for the next video. Until the next one, stay healthy and cool. See you. Bye.